There's an effort underway to solve some mysterious deaths in Minnesota. In these cases, not only do they not know what happened to the victims, they don't even know who they are. Remains that have been unidentified for decades. Lou Goose tells us about the DNA Doe Project and what it means to families who've gone years without answers. They are Minnesota's unnamed victims, John and Jane Doe's. Bodies found but never identified. We grew up together, so to think that she was missing was pretty scary. Behind every John and Jane Doe, however, are real people seeking answers. What is it like as years and decades go by and it still is a mystery in the family? Uh, I think it's just always a sad thing and, and um, maybe we didn't talk about it a lot as the years went by, but just felt so bad for her mother. Arlene Seifert lost her 10 and 14 year old sons in California in 1958 when her husband, described in newspapers as a religious fanatic, led the boys into a gunfight with police, then killed his own sons and himself. Arlene moved her daughter Roberta to Minneapolis, where she raised her in Dinkytown. But then, in 1976, Roberta, not quite 22 years old, disappeared. What did you think had happened to Roberta? I, I knew she had, you know, a troubled life, just starting from, you know, losing her, her brothers and her dad. And um, I was afraid she maybe got mixed up with somebody that wasn't good company and they maybe hurt her. I guess that's what maybe what I thought. What Roberta's cousin and the rest of the extended family didn't know is that just weeks later, workers in the Mississippi River's Lilydale Marina near the Mendota Bridge found a badly decomposed body. The coroner could tell it was a woman in her mid-20s and put out a description of her clothing. But no identification was made, and that body was named the Lilydale Jane Doe. Roberta's family never knew about the body or any potential connection. I am hardwired to help people. Things and changed in the last two years after the Ramsey County Medical Examiner enlisted the help of the DNA Doe Project. Uh, you're helping to bring a name back to somebody who's been without a name for many, many, many years, sometimes decades. Tracy Boyle and Megan so Pasika are two of the unpaid that, volunteers who work for the nonprofit DNA Doe Project using investigative genetic genealogy to identify John and Jane Doe's through DNA. Knowing you have a loved one missing is something nobody should ever have to go through. Megan um, and Tracy worked together on the 1976 Lilydale Jane Doe, plugging data from a DNA sample into two public DNA databases and began to create family trees based on distant connections. So we're able to trace back to a man from Luxembourg who was born in the early 1800s. The Fun part was that he had three wives and 20 children. So we had to build down lines for each of those children. They aren't allowed to use Ancestry DNA and 23andMe, the most popular sites, but they're helped by public records, such as newspaper archives. That's how they learned Arlene Seifert's tragic story in that she had a daughter named Roberta. And we were able to confirm that our doe was Roberta Seifert. Providing answers to families is bittersweet. Because now you have a family who is in mourning. They have answers, yes, but now they have to begin the mourning process all over again. You always have that I'll, that hope, maybe, that she would be found somewhere. Right, mm -hmm. and families really don't want to give up on hope. Exactly, and they shouldn't. Besides Roberta Seifert, in just the last couple years, the DNA Doe Project has solved three other Minnesota mysteries, identifying Mary Jensen, found in Ramsey County in 1977, Louis Gattiano, found in Rock County in 1981, and James Everett, found in Rosemount in 2014. They're still working on four other unsolved Minnesota cases, hoping to provide some closure. Some closure does mean something, even if it's difficult. Roberta's cousin, who's very spiritual, actually felt peace when Roberta's mother whispered while on her deathbed. She spoke to me when I was in prayer and um, said, uh, Robbie and the boys are with me, and um, I, had, I had a great peace. She's very thankful for what these skilled genetic genealogists are willing to do for families like theirs. I just find it really remarkable that the, these people volunteer their time, a lot of them, and um, it's such an unselfish thing to do for, for people they don't even know. I, I just think it's wonderful, very giving. Unfortunately, even though Roberta has been identified, the authorities have no leads to follow up on and no way to investigate how or why she ended up in the Mississippi River. 
The cause and manner of death has always been undetermined. Back to you.